Dan says you can live in Papaya, Nicaragua for very little money and live an incredible lifestyle. So I wanted to see for myself. So I moved here. And right now, I'm in Papaya, Nicaragua, and right behind me is Beginner's Bay. I'm gonna share with you what it's like to live here, the lifestyle, where to stay, what's it like to travel here, live here as a digital nomad, talk about visas, places to work, the food, all the surf breaks, and much, much more. So let's go. Ready. <laughs> so you're having a good time. Like, you're having a perfect time. After you get to the airport, it's a two and a half hour drive. And um, it's just country roads, back roads after a while. And uh, there's horse and buggies everywhere. There's there's uh, literally a cow herders and cows on the road, blocking up the road. It's pretty wild. So this is uh, way out there, I'm way, way out. But I can hear and smell the ocean now. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but I'm so close now. Check, check out those feet. Covered in mud. Oh my god. Made it. All right, let's go take a look inside. This is Ducasa Hostel. It's the best hostel in all of Pocoyo that I could find. It runs at around $28 a night, and that's for eight dorms. And if you want a four-room dorm, it's around $33 a night. And it includes breakfast, which saves me about $300 a month, which is an awesome savings. And the, and, the, and the breakfast is really, really good. They have these great events always going on. They have family dinners uh, happening once or twice a week. And of course, they have a bar, great sunsets. Air conditioning, which is a big plus. There isn't a lot of hostels around here with air conditioning. And um, I'll get into other hostels that I like as well. But this one was my favorite by far. And just outside the hostel here, there's a lot of um, small dirt roads with uh, very basic amenities. And there's a few restaurants nearby that I'll get into as well. And I could work here easy. The internet was great. And I did seven or you know anywhere from three to four hours a day work. And there's a little, here's a little place called Dogtown and they have surfboards and surf shops and there's a truck there. They have these awesome quesadillas. Uh, these, they're fantastic. Best quesadillas I've ever had. And it's just a really laid back vibe. Uh, really enjoyed everything about um, this area. Okay, so our first surf trip was a boat trip and it takes us to Lance's Left and playground and they do these boat trips from the hostel every week sometimes twice a week depending on how popular how many people want to go and we take a boat out and it's a really beautiful spot it's a great left hander at lance's left and then on playground there's a right hander and a left hander and they're both um the first lance's left is a uh, reef break and then playground is a and playground is a beach break and it was $35 uh, to take the boat, which isn't too bad. And it's great times. You go with five or six people. Oh, yeah, we did a little bit of wakeboarding too, which was fun. There's Lance's left there. It's like this huge cliff. There's not many people around. It's very quiet. It's just basically just us in the boat that were surfing that day. It was fantastic surf. If, you're, if you don't have your board, you can rent a board for around $10 a session or $15 a day, uh, sometimes 20 depending where you go. But I found usually $10 a session was what I usually paid. Some people do buy their own boards, which there's a Facebook group here that I'll leave somewhere in the description where you can actually buy your board and then when you leave, you can sell it. So it really doesn't cost you anything. And of course, there's some people that, a lot of people brought their own boards as well. So. Okay, so let's talk about eating out, cost of eating out, Dining, there's there lots of dining options near the hostel. There's a few restaurants, and this one is called Hide and Seek. It was one of my favorite, and it averaged anywhere from eight to fourteen dollars US. And gratuities uh, added on top of that, which is a dollar or two. It's included, and of course, you could tip if you want to. Uh, it's it was a fantastic atmosphere. The food was really good. Tons of options, and it was really near the hostel. There was other places called Castaways. I'll leave the link below. Uh, but generally speaking, the you're looking around for a meal out 
you're looking anywhere from seven to twelve dollars US for a meal. And um, so, which was it was you know a little more expensive than maybe the Philippines, but it was okay. So a lot of the times I would just eat into the hostel. They have a fantastic kitchen. A lot of people would just eat in the kitchen. So I saved a lot of money that way. And uh, it was it was every once in a while I'd, I'd go out. That was also hide and seek is also great for working um, digitally uh, if you want to just put up your laptop and work for a couple hours. They have good Wi-Fi there, so it was a great spot as well. So the hostel, the nightlife was fantastic. This is post-surf. Everybody just kind of chills around the pool and just gets, they get sleepy. Everyone goes to bed pretty early around nine or so. And um, there's a couple people that just have a beer or refreshment before uh, heading to bed. And it's a real laid back, friendly vibe. And I meet so many people and make so many friends so fast. It's, it'll make your head spin. Let's go up to the top and get a better look at those waves. It's an easy climb up here, but it's a magnificent view. Wait till you see this. So this is one of my favorite beaches so far. It's called Beginner's Bay, but don't let the name fool you because the waves actually are quite big right now. They're up to around here, head height maybe. And um, there's this cool cliff that comes out the side here. So this is kind of a landmark. This is called Magnificent Rock. And then right behind me is Beginner's Bay. And then if you if you keep going, you have Popoyo, which is the main surf hub. It's the most popular, well-known surf destination. Right behind, farther to where that, see that little peak where I'm pointing? That's probably Popoyo there. But actually, I'm really enjoying the quieter Beginner's Bay. I think the name actually is quite deceiving. and But that's good because the pros and the locals, just because they're eagle, will go over to the more popular spots. So when you come here, I've basically found the three best places to stay. It's Tukasa, which is 20 minutes east of Popoyo. It's like a 20 minute walk. And then there's uh, also Anahula. By the way, I'll put the names of these places in the description. And then the other place that's really good to work is a digital nomad. It's called Waves and Wi-Fi. And it's got a great setup, good internet. Everything's, um, there's a lot of digital nomads there. No matter where you stay in Popoyo, you're probably gonna be looking at a good 15, 20 minute walk. If, if you can afford it and it's in your budget, you might wanna get a scooter or an ATV, a four wheel quad. If it's not in your budget, you can walk it. It's still doable. I've been walking every day and uh, it's, I don't really mind it because I'm trying to save money. I'd rather spend it on food or whatever, but if it's in your budget, I, I'd recommend getting a scooter, but it's not necessary, absolute. Like you can still have a great time without it. That's the fruit, the fresh fruit and vegetable guy. He goes, he comes by every day. And other than that, there's a little surf shop near me. Get boards and flip flops. There's a little tuck truck stop to eat at. And there's a little uh, variety store market. You can get like you know basic goods. Okay, so you can see right behind me. Santana, okay, this is really close to the hostel at Tucasa that I'm staying. And you can see right now, hopefully you can see in the video that they're pretty big. They're actually at least head height, maybe a little higher, but they're closing out. So today they're not really surfable. But I did see guys here, folks here yesterday, and they were surfing it. It's a little more advanced than the beginner's bay that I showed you in the other videos. But the cool advantage is this reef is 
area and when it's working it's working it's really pumping like it's it's high and there's not many people that come to this one but that said this week it's been closing out quite a bit um, but when it is working it works great and it's really close to Tucasa here let me show you another look view so this is Santana there's nobody out there right now and probably my favorite thing about being here in Nicaragua is the people are incredibly pleasant and the locals I mean and then the people that come here there's a lot of Germans French a lot of Europeans a lot of Americans and I met a few Canadians that's the majority of the type of people I've met and they've all been incredible I've made so many friends I love this place I recommend it to anybody who's looking to surf or just have like a digital nomad lifestyle so in terms of visas and living here long term uh, you can stay here in Nicaragua to up to 90 days and then what a lot of people do is they just do a quick border hop to Costa Rica. It's really easy to get to Costa Rica, just take a bus and then the same day they come back, they renew their visa and that's, I've, there's some people here that have lived here for two years and they just do border hops. So and it's really easy, they just go back and forth every three months. Uh, now I started at a hostel just because you meet a lot of people and you make a lot of friends and then slowly over time I figured if I really liked it I would um, eventually get into an Airbnb or maybe a long-term rental and there is some cheap places to live but you're going to need a truck or an ATV if you live around here because the roads are pretty bad or a motorbike and um, so there's nothing you can live near the beach but you're still going to need some sort of vehicle eventually. I <clears throat> Would I live here long term? I definitely would. It's um, been a great experience. The sunsets are better than the ones I've seen in Bali. The food is fine. It's not like over overly amazing but it's decent i enjoy the food i've had some really good food the chef here at the hostel is fantastic and you can get fresh greens uh, from a local organic farm if you want for around 25 dollars a week and there is a few amenities that you might miss living here but i think i could do a couple more months here i'm here for two months and i i could do a couple more months but i would really need to have my own board if i stayed here and some sort of vehicle like an ATV or motorbike. And um, the, as in terms of the internet, internet works great. I haven't had any problems with that. And finding places to work is, there's a couple places, like I mentioned earlier in the video. So overall, it's a great digital nomad spot. The food is a little pricey in the touristy areas. Um, you're gonna get charged as a tourist, but if you go move inland a little bit, you can start paying local prices. And there's so much to do in Nicaragua. We, I just scratched the surface. There's like volcanoes you can go see and there's jungle parties and it just gets um, There's so much more than just surfing, but um, For this video it was just more about the beaches and the surfing and if you'd like to know more about other parts of Nicaragua Let me know. I definitely and if you want to know about more destinations just check out my Bali Philippines and Thailand videos and uh, I give you the lowdown on those too. All right. See you in the next video